The key to this ionic bonding is the transfer of electrons. It's the metal giving up the electron and the non-metal gaining the electron. And once the electrons are transferred, then you have the positive and negative charges that can stick to each other. We refer to these as electrostatic forces. That really is what ionic bonding is. Now if you've taken physics, you're familiar with Coulomb's law. You either have studied or you will study Coulomb's law when talking about static electricity. In fact, the SI unit for electric charge is the Coulomb. Coulomb was studying the forces on point charges and how they would attract or repel each other. He used the letter Q in his equation to denote charge. Now this can be confusing because we used Q earlier to talk about heat energy. But when doing static electricity, Q is referring to charge. And Coulomb's law is an inverse square law. The force between two charges is equal to a constant times the charge on the first object times the charge on the second object, all divided by the distance squared. This looks very much like a gravitational equation that Newton proposed, also an inverse square law. Now the zoom dolls in their text use Coulomb's law and convert it to an equation of energy. When you take force times distance, you get work which is related to energy. And so you can take force times r, and that gets rid of one of the r values in their equation. And then what the zoom dolls did to use this equation is they used Coulomb's constant, and then they converted things to nanometers, and then they used the standard charge of an electron and came up with this equation. So let's talk about how much energy is involved in one of these ionic bonds. Let's find out how much energy is absorbed or released when a potassium ion bonds to a fluoride ion. Now there's one piece of information we need to know. We need to know the distance. It turns out that the bond length in potassium fluoride is 2.26 angstroms. Now that symbol angstrom is named after a Swedish physicist, and so I should really be pronouncing it angstrom. As an American, I've been taught to ignore the pronunciation of other cultures and just pronounce it how I want to. So I'm going to say angstrom. Potassium fluoride is Kf, which means the two things that are bonding together are a K plus ion and an F minus ion. And then this angstrom, or angstrom, is not an SI unit, but an angstrom is equal to 10 to the negative 10 meters. Or another way to say this is that an angstrom is one-tenth of a nanometer, or there are 10 angstroms for every one nanometer. That means a bond length of 2.26 angstroms will give us a distance of 0 0.226 nanometers in my equation. Now I can say E equals this constant, 2.31 times 10 to the negative 19 joules times nanometers times Q1, which would be the charge on the potassium, which is just plus one, times Q2, which is just a charge of the fluorine, minus one. And then I'm going to divide that by my distance, which is the bond length, in nanometers. So that's going to be 0.226 nanometers. So my energy here is going to be this constant value times negative one divided by the bond length. So the nanometers cancel out as units and I'm just left with joules, which makes sense. And when I look at my calculation, I get negative 1.02 times 10 to the negative 18 joules. Before ending this video, there are a few things to consider. First, the energy value. Is it positive or negative? Our question was about the energy when potassium and fluorine were bonding together. The bonding process is always exothermic. Energy is always released when two atoms come together to form a bond. And that's true if it's ionic or covalent. Breaking a bond is always endothermic. You always have to put energy in to break a bond, but forming a bond is exothermic. So I like that we got a negative number in that answer. The other thing to consider is this unit of bond length, the angstrom, or angstrom, really have to practice saying that. It's not an SI unit, but it's a really common unit for bond length, just because that 10 to the negative 10 meter length is a very handy unit when talking about the distance between atoms in a chemical bond.